Hello friends, in this video, I'll be speaking about SICS, the small incision cataract surgery, tips and tricks. So here is the first trick to take the superectus bridle. Once you hold the superectus, the globe must turn down. That is the indication that you are holding the superectus. Otherwise, you might just catch hold of the conjunctiva and uh, that bridle may not be of any use. So this is how the superectus bridle is taken. It helps in rotating the globe downwards and also assist in stabilizing the globe. Now for peritomy, there is no need of excessive peritomy which I certain times see that surgeons are doing. Just enough for the scleral tunnel. Do very mild cautery. Do not make the whole area white because we don't want excessive scarring later. Always measure where you want to start the scleral tunnel. So for the beginners, I recommend to take the make the scleral tunnel at 1.5 millimeter from the limbus. So mark that point where the scleral tunnel will be closest to the limbus. And then you can either take a straight incision or you can take a frown incision. And that incision should be of 6 millimeters. So I am again marking 6 millimeters. So I am using here gentian valet pane just to demonstrate how I mark the scleral incision. You can also use certain markers like uh, there is a SICS marker which is available or you can simply measure like this. Now I am using a crescent blade to make a deep groove at this at joining these three points. The groove should be around 200 to 300 micron depth. Once the groove is made, I very gently start dissecting the sclera. Making the incision at the right depth is the most important part. So go very slowly. See to it that the crescent is still seen through the sclera but it should not be very clearly seen. That means you are at the right depth. Once you reach the right depth, then cross over the limbus. At this point, you should just make your crescent slightly anterior. So you go into the cornea slightly anteriorly to avoid any premature entry. Now here, watch very closely how I am dissecting the scleral tunnel. I am first going into the cornea because cornea has a good lamellar structure so we can maintain the plane better and I cut into the sclera while coming out. So first the crescent blade goes into the cornea and while coming out it creates incision in the sclera. This avoids ragged incision which may lead to more astigmatism later. So these Crescent movements are very important. So watch this video again and again and see how I am moving my crescent and I am always following the curvature of this sclera. Here I am showing you the points where the scleral tunnel is placed. If you have noticed while making the tunnel I also made some side pockets. So this is a 6 millimeter opening. Inside there is around 8 to 9 millimeter opening and the tunnel is 1.5 millimeter away from the limbus also inside the cornea there is 1.5 millimeter breadth so this is what i will recommend for the beginners you can go ahead with 2 millimeter also but 1.5 millimeter is enough to start with now i am making the side port incision which has to be larger as compared to that we use in feco because it has to accommodate the Simcoe cannula which is commonly used with SICS. It is important that you make a good large rexis. I already described the principles of making CCC using a cystitome in my another video. So I am using the same method and same steps to make that CCC. Now while entering make sure that you make this sideward movement to make sure that you are keratome is in right plane and you are not making another plane. Watch these movements again and again. Watch this video again 
and see how I am cutting while I am entering and not while I am coming out. That again makes the incision very regular and also see that the inside incision also I am making it parallel to the limbus. Once the entry is made, I do hydro dissection from the main tunnel. Now we, we can use any instrument. I generally use a long Sinsky to lift the nucleus up. But here I am using a ball tipped blunt chopper where I can negotiate the equator of the lens very easily. And because it is a ball tip chopper, it is very, very safe for the posterior capsule. You can also try using this instrument, which makes bringing the nucleus into AC a very easy maneuver. So once one pole is out, I think it is very easy for to rotate the nucleus into the AC anterior chamber. Once the nucleus is out, we can just rotate it with visco cannula itself and keep pushing some visco over and under the nucleus. And now this is a very important part of the SICS. This is where good technique is required to protect the endothelium. Watch how I did it. First, the nucleus gets engaged in the scleral tunnel. And then I just press the posterior lip. Using the visco cannula, you can use the wire vectis also. And then if your scleral tunnel is of adequate length and it is well configured, it comes out with it. Now I want to show this uh, particular step in slow motion video. Just watch, I am pushing some visco under the nucleus and the nucleus gets engaged into the scleral tunnel. So it is not over the iris, but it is engaged in the scleral tunnel. So you have to carefully watch this particular step because this is the step where you can damage the endothelium. So just imagine the scleral tunnel as I have shown earlier and the nucleus is engaged into the scleral tunnel. Once it is engaged, it's just a matter of just pushing the posterior lip down that the nucleus comes out. If the nucleus is large, like, like in cases of brown or black cataracts, you can make the posterior incisions to the scleral incision and make it large on the outside also for the easy delivery of the nucleus, which I can show in another video. Now, most important thing is using Simco for irrigation aspiration. Now, it is a manual cortex aspiration method, which is a low flow method, unlike the coaxial uh, aspiration method which we use in, with our FECO machine. So here the principle is that you catch hold of the anterior part of the cortex and the beauty of this particular instrument is that once the occlusion is achieved, it doesn't get released unless you push the fluid back, which you don't do generally. So once occlusion is achieved, you just pull out that cortex. That is how it should be done. So do not try to aspirate the cortex inside the anterior chamber, which makes fluctuation in the anterior chamber, which I many times see when the uh, uh, some surgeons are operating, that the AC keeps collapsing. So there is no need to aspirate the cortex inside the eye. Just catch hold of the cortex very, very gradually. There is no need to do very rapid movements to remove the cortex. In fact, the movement should be very, very slow. So you, uh, you know, the cortex occludes the tip completely. You can see here the occluding, the cortex is occluding the tip and then you can just pull it out gently without much hurry. And this way, the Simco cannula is makes it very safe. So for the subvestigial cortical matter, I am using the right side port. So I think just watch these steps very carefully. See how gentle I am while I am uh, removing the cortex. There is no hurry. Still within a minute, I can remove all the cortex very, very easily. You can also do the posterior capsular wash or hydration or just hydro displacement of the cortical fibers with your Simco. So the principle is that let cortex occlude the tip very gently and then you pull it out. Don't aspirate it inside. This is the implantation of a PMMA non-foldable IOL 
you can see the 6 mm optic just snugly fits into the incision indicating that my incision size is just 6 mm this is the method you just rotate the leading haptic in the back and now don't use the scleral tunnel but use the side port and use a simple Sinsky dialer first push the optic inside the back and then you rotate the haptic in the back so make it into three steps first putting the leading haptic in the back second push the optic in the back and the third push the haptic in the back do thorough wash of the entire chamber because we are using a low flow system of simco so take your time to wash all the visco otherwise you will have increased intraocular pressure next day and just a little bit of bipolar cautery to close the conjunctiva so there is no need of any sutures so this is a small incision cataract surgery for you watch this video again and again and watch each and every step very very carefully i have explained most important thinking process behind each step and have a great result with this very nice surgical technique for removal of the cataract thank you so much